let's go on an adventure. That's right, guys. We are in Toronto. T O T dot. The yeah, I'll stop. I'll stop saying it like that. Anyways, in this video, we're gonna bring you along for an epic Korean meal. Actually, two epic Korean meals. After that, we're gonna go into some unique cuisines you can find in Toronto, and then we're gonna end up with a couple of just giant feasts. Uh, one uh, from a very renowned restaurant, and then one Greek. Toronto just such an amazing melting pot of uh, diverse cuisines uh, and I can't wait to share some of it with you anyways come along let's go first stop epic Korean cheese chicken let's go <laughs> spot and uh, they're known for cheese takkalbis. It's $15.99 per person and then if you order for two I think then it comes with all the banchan around it. We are very hungry. I think all I've eaten today are pretzels <laughs> and water. <laughs> That's pretty much I it. I thought it was cornbread. Oh, I did have cornbread. That's true. No, I gotta make it dramatic for the video. You okay. know, for, for YouTube, right? Okay. All I ate was pretzels, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh okay, yeah, perfect. So there you go. This is all we got here because uh, it's literally in their name. Uh, so just a whole bunch of chicken with some cheese on top and some uh, spicy sauce. And look at that. Oh, look at that cheese. Oh, yes. Uh, I can tell, uh, right, I can tell there's some tteokbokki in here too. So some rice cakes. And yeah, let's put that right on the rice. Oh man, there you go. Right on here. Oh, perfect. I'm gonna get the topoki first. Look at that, just that epically cheesy topoki. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, that topoki. Yeah, not too firm, very nice and kind of pillowy. Mm, yeah, it's really good. And then let's go right into the chicken here. Oh, right on top of the rice. Look at that, right there. Perfect. Mm. Yeah, chicken, nice and tender. That cheese on there, and of course, you know, the more you cook it, the more the sauce kind of just renders down and turns into more chili goodness, which is exactly what we're looking for. But yeah, just a whole bunch of cheese. Look at that. Oh, oh yes, perfect. Uh, it doesn't come with rice, so you have to order the rice separately. I would recommend it because, you know, I don't think you would just eat that like that. it around with the rice. But yeah, pretty much I think it's just chicken, maybe some cabbage, some onions, and some tteokbokki. And all together, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I would say is maybe, could be maybe a little bit more spicy, but that's just, you know, personal preference. It's probably something you could ask for anyways. Yeah, once again, tender chicken, nice sauce. The sauce is nicely rendered, some good flavor in there uh, from uh, the peppers. The tteokbokki actually is really good. I love the fluffiness and the softness of the tteokbokki. Very good start, we'll finish this off. We saw a couple of other spots that look pretty interesting, so let's check those out. Just a 
perfect little package. Those flavors are all out. That onion is so good. Normally, lettuce wraps, not interesting. <laughs> but this kind of lettuce wrap is the lettuce wrap I could, I could throw my body into. Just wrap myself in that pork and then, you know, give me like a little kimchi cover. A bit of that cheese corn. Maybe all mixed with the egg too. Yeah, put them together. All right, there you go. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do though? Oh yeah, that's pretty good. It's a nice soft tofu in there. Oh yeah, very nice. Mm, it's a little bit fatty too. Maybe they were using some like kind of beef stock or something. So let's go into these intestines. These are pig intestines and I'm so excited to put these on the grill. Now, if you like crispiness, this this you'll like too. Oh yes, perfect. Oh, look at that. And those garlic pieces on there too look so delicious. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so good. You know, if this was in high school and it was uh, fighting crime in its spare time, what do you think you'd call it? Kimchi possible? You know the founder of KSC, right? <laughs> Get it? Colonel Sanders? <laughs> What? You think I'm a basket case? Yeah, looking up uh, kind of unique foods in Toronto. Uh, I had no idea that uh, Maltese food was even in the Toronto food scene. Uh, but looking at it, actually, I think there's like three or four bakeries. Uh, so this seems to be the closest one to us. Mostly just bakery items, but one that's, uh, uh, I guess one item that keeps on popping up with insistence is called uh, pastiji. I hope I'm saying it properly. <laughs> uh, but they're kind of these little uh, filled, I guess it's almost like a, a flaky crust and then inside I think there's a sweet version with ricotta and then there's a version I think with peas and I want to say meat uh, meat <laughs> maybe beef I think it's beef and peas anyways uh, fairly on the small side uh, but yeah let's just see I want to see what the interior looks like super crispy oh interesting oh yeah so that's the one with the peas and beef and there you go that's kind of the interior but yeah let's take a bite Almost like mushy peas. Pastry is very crispy on the outside, but then it kind of gives way to a little bit more uh, doughiness. Next one, and this one should be the ricotta one. Now the ricotta one, I think is the one uh, I've heard about. And there you go, ooh, look at that. Once again, these are very, very, uh, fairly small. So they're not, uh, they're not too big. And then look at that, yeah, that ricotta filling is kind of cool there. Mm. Oh, that's my favorite. I thought it was gonna be sweet. It's not sweet, it's uh, just, Straight up ricotta, but just that's all you taste and then just that pastry around it But the ricotta is very good quality very creamy. It's probably whole milk. Yeah, this one's my favorite for sure fresh homemade I think they're just cannolis. I don't know if they call them something else in Malta, but look at this <laughs> As soon as he brought the tray of these out I knew we knew we had to get them and cannolis if they're done right one of my favorite things in the world One of my favorite desserts. Oh, it's so good. And this one looks epic. That's delectable. Very creamy. Thank you very much. Fairly sweet. So it tastes like eggnog actually a little bit. There's some like chocolate chips, maybe a hint of cinnamon, and then just that epic creaminess. This next one's really cool. It's called now, I don't know if I'm gonna butcher this, but Imkara. 
Kim Kardashian? I'm not, I'm not sure how to say it. I'm really sorry. This one has dates in it. It's pretty much just fried dough. And inside, you're just gonna have a date filling. Uh, you can also get the one without date filling. Ooh. Yeah, it smells really spiced too. Oh. Mm, that's nice. It's very simply just date paste. I don't think I taste any other flavoring. I think for me, my faves here are definitely the ricotta pastizzi and then the, the cannoli on top of that. Anyways, uh, yeah, that date pastry, I said imka completely wrong. It's supposed to be called imara. They're, they're making me say some other ones and it's it's tough. Uh, there's some really interesting kind of uh, mouth, uh, mouth things you do have to do. Apparently there's a Maltese community in Vancouver. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. We are Legion. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, any Maltese people watching this channel? Maybe some. Uh, you know, hey, be, feel free to open a place in Vancouver. I will definitely stop by and, and pay a visit for sure. Uh, so yeah, another really cool neighborhood in Toronto. Uh, I think it's about three, four blocks. There are a whole bunch of like little Nepalese spots. This place, uh, mostly momos and I think also beef noodle soup. That's what we got. Uh, another one I've never tried before is uh, finally I get to try the butter tea. Uh, so butter tea traditionally uh, will be just uh, fairly normal tea, but the one uh, twist is they'll add some salt and then yak butter. I don't know if they're using actual yak butter here. They might just be using normal butter, uh, but traditionally you're using yak butter. Uh, so yeah, very unique uh, drink and it literally just smells like butter. Honestly, it literally tastes like melted salted butter uh, and a little bit of tea, literally, literally that, that's it. I like it, I think it's really good. Probably not for everybody though, but for me, I'm French. I'm a butter guy. I like my butter. <laughs> so this is uh, right up my alley. This one is the beef momo. And uh, momos is, I mean, it's pretty much an oversized dumpling. And it's uh, probably one of the staples of Nepal. Uh, and what's really cool is you can kind of mix different sauces with them. You have uh, different hot sauces and of course, I think, oh, like almost, yeah, it's like some kind of pickled veggie on there too. So I think my first bite is maybe gonna be putting some of those pickled veggies and maybe a little bit of that hot sauce on there too. Should I say it's the moment of truth? Momo, moment of truth. <laughs> Anyways. Oh yeah, mm, hold up right. Mm, so juicy, there's like a cumin kick in there. That hot sauce too, packs a punch. I didn't even put that much on it, but it's fairly spicy. Uh, that dough is not too thick. And then interior, you saw that juice that just came out, just, uh, just a waterfall of, of beef juices. Oh, I can see this warming you up and just making you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Just. Oh, just a happy dish. Okay, next one, potato momo. These are fried and look at that. That looks pretty good too. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll put some more hot sauce on there. Oh yeah, wow. Mm. Oh, watch out when eating this because that is incredibly hot too. Just imagine a smaller, more compact, uh, more intense samosa. Mm. And then inside, look at all that potato in there too. Oh, look at that. Yeah, beautifully spiced. I think there's maybe peas? Actually, I don't think there's any peas. Yeah, so literally just some potato, maybe some green onion in there. But yeah, spiced beautifully once again and then just hot, fluffy, crispy outside. That one's really good too. The more you have experienced eating, uh, the more you can kind of tell how spicy th something's gonna be. I, I feel like this chili oil is not kidding around. So let's see if I'm right. <laughs> there you go, right on there. I'm not gonna add too much, cause you know, don't wanna die yet, you know. I wanna make it back home before I die. Actually no, maybe like Mediterranean somewhere. Yeah. Oh, kill me there. First of all, super delicious. I love that chili oil. Second of all, I was right. They're, they're not kidding around. That chili oil is spicy. Ooh. Oh yeah, my eyes are like 
50% bigger now. Okay, and the only other non-Momo thing they have is a beef noodle soup. Uh, so this looks really cool, look at that. So it's a bunch of noodles, there's the beef on this side, and then, uh, yeah, just in a broth. And let's just mix it around a little bit. Let's try the broth first. Oh yeah, fairly mild, uh, just slightly salted. But yeah, let's try a little bit of that beef in there. I think this is meant to like, um, you know, add seasoning to. Beef is very lean. Uh, yeah, mm, but nicely salted too. Noodles, not too al dente, a little bit on the soft side. I think this is one of those soups that I think could benefit from a little bit of this chili oil once again. That's exactly what it needed. Oh yeah, just that extra kick, that extra flavor, that extra kind of spicy um, umaminess to it. The thing I noticed about the soup, which is really delicious, are the greens. Yeah, they're like a little bit bitter, so I'm not sure exactly what they are. Each bite, you should be getting some of those greens because those are just... Mm. Almost like mustard greens. Oh wow. <laughs> what is that, tsunami? plan was to go to a Cuban place, uh, but we opened, tried to open the door and it wasn't opening. There was a person in there. We couldn't get in. They didn't do anything. So, plan B. Very luckily for us, a place called Foxley. Apparently kind of like a Asian slash uh, South American fusion. Uh, and apparently I just talked to the server and they were also featured in a very recent CNN uh, documentary show. Uh, so yeah, really excited. The menu looks so cool. Yeah, super unique. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get a whole bunch of stuff. We're very hungry. First dish, uh, scallop ceviche, and this looks so good. So I think there's some, uh, I think there's some jalapeno in here. There's some spices, and look at just those giant pieces of scallop. I think they're just full scallops, maybe sliced uh, lengthwise or horizontally. No. Horizontally, yeah, horizontally, I remember. <laughs> Not vertically, that wouldn't make sense. Okay, so, yeah, uh, let's focus on that. Yeah, don't focus on the stupid words I'm saying. Uh, so, just whole scallops, uh, look at all those seasonings on there, and let's just take a bite, look at that. That looks absolutely beautiful. And I can tell, just by the suppleness uh, of the scallop on the spoon, it's gonna be really delicious. Let's take a bite. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Wow. There's like an epic smokiness uh, coming from the scallop. The scallop is super soft, beautifully cooked. Just, I think it's just barely cooked. Uh, so you just get that epic soft creaminess from it. 
there's a little bit, just a hint of spice coming from the jalapeno. And then that sauce. I think there are dried shallots in there. I want to say there's some bonito flakes in there too. That's what I taste. One more bite. Let's just go. Wow. What an explosion of flavor. Lamb and duck prosciutto dumplings. This looks really good too. Look at this. Oh, yes. So it looks like they're deep fried. I'm not sure exactly what the sauce is, but yeah. Uh, just super nice morsels. Morsels? <laughs> morsels of goodness. Super ducky, it's not an adjective, but <laughs> it's really good. Just full on duck, a little bit of seasoning, very juicy, very meaty, and then just a crispy texture on the outside. Can't really taste the sauce that much. Uh, it's probably just a little bit vinegary, but I think you just have to douse it more into that vinegar. And there you go. I don't think there's any filler in there. I think it's just meat, straight up meat. And that is just super duckin' delicious. Next dish, Szechuan frogs legs. Now this one has got me super excited as a happy and plump Frenchman. You know I'm all about those frogs legs. I love frogs legs. Uh, no matter what form they come in, I might even eat them alive. You never know. No, I'm kidding. That's pretty bad. No, no, no. Let's try these frogs legs here. Uh, so, oh, look at that. Yes, just super plump. Look at this guy right there. Oh, oh, and just still smoking. So the Szechuan spice on there too. I'm gonna try to get a little bit more of just uh, some of these vegetables. And uh, I think, I'm not sure if they're butterflied or anything, but I'm just gonna try taking a bite from this side here. But yeah, look at that. This is a handheld dish. <laughs> I don't think you can chopstick this one. Mm. Oh, <laughs> that was all batter. But because of that, look at this bit of meat that just came out there. Oh yes, perfect. Okay, let's try that. Mm. Yeah, oh, it's all about that spice. For me, it's all about that crispy outside and then that, that epic kind of medley of vegetables on top. I think that's what really gives uh, the frog legs a flavor. The frog legs themselves are fairly neutral. They don't have too much taste, uh, but yeah. Once you add that kind of vegetable medley on top, then you're really talking the flavor. And yeah, that's really good. Oh, and I just got a big bite of a Szechuan peppercorn in there too. Oh yeah, that's great. Really good dish. The only thing I, I would say is maybe they could marinate the frog in something just to give it a little bit more saltiness uh, on the inside. Szechuan frog legs? I'm pretty sure it's time to hop on this trend. Hop? That's a frog. Two more dishes and we're getting towards the end here. Uh, but yeah, this one looks kind of cool. So, General Tao's chicken. Okay, uh, look, that is probably the whitest thing in the world. But here, uh, they've made chicken wings out of them and it's kind of cool that they're uh, doing a play on them. So here you go. We have these huge chicken wings and look how freaking massive these are. This is just an absolute dinosaur, a beast. And uh, you can kind of smell it almost smells like a little bit of anise or a little of like uh, maybe even five spice. Nice and vinegary and I really like those toasted sesame seeds on there too. The chicken itself, fairly juicy. Nice crunch on the outside. The execution on this is just really nice. Yeah, perfectly juicy chicken wing. Look at that interior there. What I really like on this would be a little bit more garlic flavor. That would be really cool in here. But other than that, just really delicious. Next one is the, I think it's like a side rib. I kind of forgot what the seasoning was, uh, but look at that. Just very, very similar color to the chicken wings, but just like glaze on there. Oh, that looks great too. Mm. And these crispy shallots on there. Wow, you can definitely smell that anise. Let's do a tender test. Let's see how tender this is. Oh yeah, that is so different. The color of the sauce is the exact same, but the flavor could not be more different. It's almost like a Southeast Asian style of flavor going on. There's some spice in there. I want to say maybe some Thai chilies and then just a giant hit. I think it's lemongrass. I want to say it's lemongrass, maybe some galangal in there. I think the meat or the fat to meat ratio is fairly lean. But with that being said, I think just the way it falls off the bone and the way I just bit the meat off, it's so tender still. 
wow. Mm, that flavor coming from there, that sweetness, that Thai chili, and that just catapulted itself to the top. I mean, just look, look, look how tender that is. Just, I mean, I don't even have to look at <laughs> it. just comes right off. <laughs> yes. Yeah, must get for sure. So yeah, we've just ventured into uh, Greek town. This whole street, I think it's Danforth Street. Uh, it's all just a whole bunch of Greek businesses. And yeah, we're gonna start off right here. Uh, we are at Menzes, and apparently their portions are fairly large. Uh, and we're gonna get a couple of items that you might know and a couple items you might not know. The first one, uh, you might know, uh, but not still not that common, it's uh, Lukanika, I wanna say. It's a Greek uh, sausage, and what's really unique about it is they actually flavor it with orange. <clears throat> So yeah, look at that, yes. So the orange peel just right on the outside there. I think that's an orange peel. And there you go, that's the inside. And yeah, just smelling it, you can just smell that floralness from the orange. And yeah, let's just take a bite. Mm. Yeah. Very meaty sausage. It's almost like a, a little bit like a smoked sausage. You definitely do taste that orange peel in there. They did give you a lemon with it. It's a more lean style sausage, so there's not gonna be too much fat content in there. Uh, so I think you do need a little bit of lemon. I like that a lot. Mm. What's really cool, look at this, they give you, <clears throat> we ate a couple already, but they give you just a thing of bread with like 20 butter cups. <laughs> like, just a whole bunch of butter, I love that. Uh, so yeah, let's go right into this octopus. And yeah, the octopus looks pretty good. And I'll link the name because I, I forgot what it's called, uh, but it is a Greek name. <laughs> and there you go, octopus right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the char on the outside is very crispy. Um, the inside uh, still has a bit of a bite, but it's still very tender. And then there's like a, like I said, like a charred flavor coming from there. Maybe a little bit of spice. I want to say maybe they put some paprika or something on there. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, just delicious. And of course, all those herbs. Oh, you know what? I think it's all the oregano. Yeah, just a whole bunch of oregano, a whole bunch of herbs. And then, yeah, just... Oh, perfect. More food here for awesome. Thank you. Sharing everything, right? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Perfect. Enjoy, guys. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yes, okay, more stuff has arrived. Yes, <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, um, right away, the portion's really nice, and uh, what I love too is it comes with a salad. I think the uh, moussaka actually comes with a salad. Uh, I'm gonna try one more bite of this, uh, this great uh, octopus, so. It's all about that great char on the outside. This is a panza ropita. So this one has beets inside of it and it comes with a potato kind of dip. So this one will not only have beets inside, but it'll have leeks too. So beets and leeks and super cool. And then let's just try to break it into. Oh, look at that, look at that color. Oh, wow, so cool. Yeah, so vibrant, beautiful. I'm gonna get some of this potato on there too because I think that's gonna be a great combination for the two. That's a great combination. The beets are grated, and I think maybe the leeks are too. And the beets, obviously, when they cook, you get a little bit of sweetness. But then, as soon as you put that potato spread on there, you just get just a hit of garlicky goodness. And that combination of sweet and garlicky is amazing. This is freshly fried too, or freshly baked. I'm not sure. I think it's more than baked, but. Uh, it's so hot, it's so steamy by itself. I think it's just mostly just beet flavor and then a nice crispy outside, but you gotta mix it with that potato. That potato just brings it all together. Moussaka, so what moussaka is for those of you who don't know, 
is it's a kind of like a Greek version of lasagna. And what you'll have is normally uh, layers of eggplant. Uh, you'll have a kind of meat sauce, that, and then on top it's bechamel, and it just makes a whole. It's it's a beautiful thing. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I'm gonna take uh, one from here, and I'll show you kind of the layers of it too. Look at that. Yes. Oh, that's kind of what you're looking at there. Should have probably. I should have grabbed it from my side, but it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, look at that. Oh. Oh, there's lamb too. Oh, I think there's shredded lamb in here. Maybe, or is this? Uh, no, that's eggplant. Okay, I got excited for two seconds. Hmm. Mm. Oh, that's great. That bechamel is so creamy, so delicious. Then you get the crispiness on the outside, and then that meat sauce is really good, not overpowering. I think here what they've done is they really kind of mixed uh, the meat and the eggplants together. They've uh, mixed some onions in there too. And the eggplant is so creamy too. Oh wow, that's a great moussaka. And of course, the rice, oh, well, you know, it's rice. <laughs> Let me try a bit of the rice. Rice, fairly common, you know, uh, not bad. And then the potato. The potato normally will always be a good sign of a good Greek place is how well they do their potatoes. And let's see, this one hopefully should have the lemon flavor in there. Oh, it's a good potato too. I think it was finally time we did Greek food on this channel. And you know, it's feta late than never. You know, better, feta, late than never. <laughs> That's terrible. How do you get in contact with a Greek architect? You call him? <laughs> Call them. That will pretty much be it. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us in this uh, Toronto video. Uh, just a quick two-day trip. Uh, like I said, Toronto just so diverse, uh, so many cool spots. If you do enjoy our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the uh, like button, of course, hit the bell icon so we can notify you future videos, and of course, uh, hit us up with those comments. Any other spots in TO that we should try out? There are many. Give me some recommendations uh, because we will be back uh, fairly soon, hopefully. Uh, anyways, we'll see you very soon for now. Ciao. We chose that location on purpose just to creep you out.